Hey, welcome to Dom Time. Tonight, something we've seen, the Rutgers coach, the tape that we've seen, and all the things that have come out of that. Talking with Ken Dunnick and talking with Phil Andrews about what are some of the things we've seen here. Is this really later tonight we see the NCAA basketball? I know I'll watch it. Even though guys like Rick Pitino, I despise. I mean, I literally do. John Calipari, I've seen him up close. They, these guys are repugnant. Uh, Jim Beheim, you can go down the list to me. You guys have had to cover them. How do you cover guys like this? Oh, boy. Well, you know, most coaches, it's very easy to cover because it's mandatory that you, they have right. press conferences. So right. that's how you cover them. Uh, unless but have you seen the stuff at practices when you were yeah, when you've been covering? Yeah. yeah, you sit up in this. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Now, Jay Billis, who viewers might know, is one of the real top guys from Duke. And he saw this at a shoot around with this guy. And apparently he did this at high school clinics and all. Yeah, see, that's where you're stepping over the line with younger kids. Yeah. I mean, obviously you shouldn't do it with anybody, but, you know, kids that are young, like high school kids? You're talking about high school kids? Yeah, high school kids. Yeah, that's. Yeah. No. Because what are you teaching there? Yeah, exactly. You know? Well, how about girls sports? What do you think, Ken? What, what's going on with this? What's the line? We want to have equity. We want to have parity. But I wonder if any dad tonight had a daughter out there playing and they had a guy like this doing this to a female. I think well, there'd be a different reaction. You, you have to that. separate language and physicality. Yeah. I and mean, there's no way you could ever get away as a man coach of, of, of touching or doing right. anything, throwing right. the basketball at, at right. a woman. I mean, that just would be verboten uh, at all costs. But, uh, you know, there, there is a, and there's, and there's a, to me, I would be sensitive to language with a woman as well. You know, I know uh, men who coach women's college basketball who actually make sure that there's a woman present at all mm -hmm. times just because some one may say accuse them of something so right. yeah it's it's a totally different animal when a man is coaching a woman's team how about what have you seen phil um well listen i, I i've had a chance to you know pat pat uh, head summit from tennessee right. same thing verbal verbal language you know and like you said we were talking earlier about you know i've seen coaches grab players to put right. them in position but right. the throwing of the ball at the head, that's, that's where I think things, because you can, look, coaches do it all the time. They maneuver players, even, even at the little league level, you know, to, you know, stand here. You know, right. Stand here, I want you here, and I see that all the time. But where this guy got out of control was throwing the ball at, at, at kids. Uh, look, this is um, video uh, at Holy Family. I, I don't right. remember this. this. Is Coach O'Connor. I had him on the air, yeah. Okay, this happened a couple of years right. ago right in our backyard. Well, Rutgers is in our backyard. But here's the situation. That kid that he just knocked over there, his parents sued the, sued the university. Right. The rest of the players on that team went against that kid. Well, and the thing that I saw there, too, even though he didn't damage him by doing it, the kicking. There's it something the, about the kicking anybody played sports. It's degrading. And this, and this guy, Mike Rice, kicking a guy in the yeah. backside, too. Yeah, something like but, that is just uh, but, hard but, to but imagine. But, Dom, degrading is their intent. That's what right. they're trying to do. They think they're toughening up a player by degrading them in that manner. And right. uh, I've never been a big fan of, of that type of coach. See, that's okay what he just did. This is where he steps over right. the line. Right, pushing exactly. him, that's what Kicking him, that's... Well, I don't necessarily think pushing him down well, is, I mean, is okay Well, you know, I mean, it, it, you, you go up and, and you, bump, you chest bump somebody or something like that. You, that hey, but he uh, can't... Ken, I mean, Ken, you're a big guy. You played at a high level. You played Pro Bowl. You played with the Eagles and others. And yet you reject this stuff. What do you say to those guys that get called me and talk radio and they may be watching tonight? They think that's old school. They think this well, is like the military. It's toughening them up. That well, kind of thing. I'm, I'm sensitive about it because I coached for a long time. Okay. I was actually on the Holy Family Woman staff for a while and coached okay. AAU extensively and coached my daughters through that uh, time of their lives. And, you know, I, I want to make sure that when I coach that I was uh, making kids feel good about themselves. Of course, I wanted to win, but I wasn't right. in a position where it was winning at all costs. I could nurture these children and help them become better players and better people. When you're a professional coach, however, and these guys are that having that you know step step letter to success, it's a totally different animal, and they're out to achieve the best they can in their career. And with women's sports, because there is not that there's not well, there's no football, but with basketball, there's only a certain level they're going to go to. I have to say, we haven't seen the excesses. You haven't seen recruiting excess. You haven't seen the wildness you see with men's sports. It's almost a perfect game in that way. Well, I think if you look at a guy, you know, it's funny you mentioned that you didn't like Patino. I'm assuming that you don't like uh, Patino because you don't like his demeanor on the sideline because I don't like it either. Right. And Gino Oriema has the, the same uh, type of thing going on on the sideline. He's, he's a very rough vocal coach. Um, 
and I don't, you know, is there a difference between men and women in that? Well, those are two pretty successful coaches that are coaching on, you know, each side of the game. So it's interesting. Yeah, I think now, when you get to that level, you become driven, like Ken said. Now, now let's move it down a little bit level. You have a son, I think, 13, Pop Warner, yeah. that type of stuff. Are you seeing more of this in coaches at that level? Oh, you listen, Rice? I'm going to tell you right now. Well, no, well, as a matter of fact, this past summer, well, my son's team was at a what they call a gymboree where you play like right. different teams for like maybe 10 downs each way. Right. And there was one team that all you could hear, no matter where you were on the complex, these coaches yelling and belittling the kids, you know, just belittling. And all the parents were saying, I would never let my kid play for that guy. So why do you think these other parents are doing that? Because they want their sons to play football. Right. And, and, and maybe in some instances they think that that's what the kids need. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe that's what they're thinking. Yeah. But I, that, I was like, because like Ken, I also coached. You know, I, I coached uh, some soccer, right. some, some youth soccer, some uh, amateur right. adult soccer right. and stuff. And the things they tell you, they teach you, you know, you can't even hug. Even after, like, after a good game. Right. If, if you're a male coaching females, no hugs or anything like mm -hmm. that because of the consequences so of what. So is, is the hope these parents think too mistakenly because the numbers are small that they're going to be driven to get a college scholarship. Well, that's, they that's, want that that's all about. That's big, and they that. think this guy, they'll put up with it, everything right. because they think that this is going to result in a scholarship. That's, yes, I and mean, that's the incentive for parents. It's unfortunate. You know, I remember taking my oldest daughter, Ashley, who was a very good high school player, to her first AAU tryout. Mm -hmm. And the coaching behavior was so bad. When I, we went home, I told her, I said, if you're going to play AAU, I'm going to coach. You. And that's why, how I got into coaching. By bad, what were they doing? Well, just the abuse of the refs, uh, mm -hmm. yelling at the kids. You know, uh, it was it was just to me it was it was not what that should be all about. And I decided that if I was going to put my kid in that environment, I was going to run that environment. And that's what I did. Phil, you first lessons out of all this. You've seen, uh, I've seen a political lesson. Don't have Governor Christie want to get you out of there. That's a big <laughs> lesson here. He started tweeting immediately in the middle of this because he's been portrayed, I think, wrongly as a bully. As a bully. Right? Yeah. So he jumps in to say, I'm stopping the bully, and he calling him an animal today. It's pretty, pretty amazing. Lesson out of all this, is it just that we got the, the pictures here? Yeah, I mean, look, what would have happened if these pictures were never revealed? Right. And, and, and how many other athletic directors across the country have tapes like this or know that their coaches do well, this. Well, and then we got a guy that the FBI is looking at now, Murdoch, <laughs> who played NBA basketball. He might be caught up in a blackmail scheme here. It's kind of hard to tell which yeah, way he went. Was, he was trying to extort the university. He was fired, and it's argued he was trying to extort the yeah. university for $900,000. So they said, so apparently. We, we Allegedly. Gotta, right. you got to be careful. Exactly, exactly right. You know, his so, title is director of basketball, was director of right. basketball operations. That's a very entry-level position when it comes to college basketball. You're not right. making that much money. So maybe there was a financial incentive there to do that. But does this give us an idea, though? It just seems to me. My son, uh, DJ, my oldest, talks about coaching. He coaches at a pretty high level. Someday I think he liked, he's watching tonight, to coach at a college level. And I think, are you nuts? I mean, is, is, is it this corrupt, no, this because, difficult? No, and you know what, not every coach is the same way. Some coaches feel it, that this is, their, this is their method and this is how they want to coach. There I'm, are other coaches. I'm, I'm talking about the whole thing. What you have to do to recruit a kid. I'd rather coach pro ball. At least we know what we're doing. We're being paid. We're managed. Well, you get paid a lot more money, that's for sure. If you yeah, continue. but I mean, to recruit a kid, what you have to say it's or what you have to do. It's all very competitive. Can't hit it right on the head. There's only X number of kids right. who are good enough to play at that level. Right. And you got these coaches knowing, if I can get this kid to play on my team. Just one, I have basketball better, particularly. Basketball yeah. is pretty for us. Yeah, exactly. if I can get this one kid, I have a better chance of keeping my job, you know, down the road. And that's what it is. It's all, you know, mm -hmm. um, incentive driven. And, and the longer you, the more you win. Like Gino Oriano, he's got that job. Gino's got that job, and he's a local guy from Norristown. I know Gino personally, you know, because I used to coach. I used to cover both those teams, and his his counterpart, Jim Calhoun. There was another guy that used well, to verbally. These you know, were guys that did an interview. Calhoun, Bayheim, <coughs> guys like this, and they're appalled by this coach's yeah, sure. behavior, which is. Rather remarkable. Lesson, Ken, for you out of all this. Well, I think you're going to see a great contrast in coaching styles uh, tonight in the NCAA uh, championship right. game. Uh, the mission coaches, uh, to me, coaches the way it, it should be done. And, of course, you've got the Patino style that the rants and raves. And, but, uh, you know, I think that it's good that uh, the light has been shined on this. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe it will make more people aware of what actually is going on in some of these programs. And, you know, uh, again, focus on the kids because that's what this is all about, not the money. I think that's where the problem Comes in. Well, Ken, thanks for joining us tonight. Continued success with the magazine. Phil, we'll see you here, too. Thanks very much for joining us, too. Hey, by the way, I like your set. Well, it's thank you very much. It's very nice. Thanks for, the, uh, like thanks for the compliment. Right. Coming up.
I'll uh, take a shot. We had three people that have passed just in the last 48 hours. One of them really, really significant. A few final thoughts here on Dom Time. Hey everyone, welcome into Dom Time. It's sad to report just the last 24, 48 hours, passing of three figures that I know I've talked about and I've heard people talk about. Uh, Rick Warren's son. Rick Warren, the mega church pastor, the author of The Purpose Driven Life, his son committing suicide over the weekend. And just uh, the difficulty when you see a guy like Warren, who arguably is even beyond Billy Graham as a huge, huge figure, very difficult story. This afternoon, Annette Funicella, uh, Forever Young, The Mouseketeers, uh, Frankie Avalon, dead at the age of 70, around complications with MS. And then the biggest, this morning, as I came on the air, the Iron Lady, Margaret Thatcher, arguably the linchpin figure, along with Ronald Reagan, Pope John Paul, that I think, even when you take into account World War II, the fall of the Soviet Union, when you were of a certain age and doing duck and cover, when you were worried, as I was during the Cuban Missile Crisis, about what the heck was going to happen, did you ever think we'd live to see the collapse of the Soviet Union? Margaret Thatcher was the person that really engineered that because she, before Ronald Reagan, saw that Gorbachev was someone you could deal with. And as a result of that, the Soviet Union ultimately collapsed. Rest in peace, the Iron Lady, just a, an exemplar for all women in power. That's Dom time for tonight. Join us again next week at 7 p.m.